Lily, no climbing on the Parmesan. <laughs> Lily, that is very disrespectful. We taught you not to be rude. Okay, which one of you taught her to be rude? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in here? Oh, it's the middle of a dig dig night. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, how did you get out of your crib? Snack. No, no, it's not snack time, sweetie. It's time to. <laughs> what is going on with her? She's supposed to be the sweet one. We heard that. Not cool, mom. Oh, come on. Sorry, kids. <laughs> Love you. No, Lily, you clearly need sleep and you have school in the morning. Wait a minute, school? Maybe that's where she's picking up this bad behavior. <gasps> that makes total sense. Maybe she's got a new friend who acts like this. Ah, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> finally some peace and quiet. <laughs> hmm. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, first thing tomorrow morning, we march right in there and find out who's ruining our precious Lily. Snack, 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 snack. That won't work. Oh, if she sees us there, she'll know something's up. We'll need to get creative. Whoa, nice save, hon. You ready for a fun day at preschool? So ready. Did I tell you they have a trampoline? Yes, sweetie, 43 times. But remember, the reason you're going is to keep an eye on Lily. You need to find out who's encouraging her to misbehave. I'm on it, Mom. Don't forget your lunch, Lenny. Uh, 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 LJ, I got more parm for you. <laughs> Lily, Jackson, put down those juice boxes. <laughs> Jackson's bad too? Uh, one bedroom is not enough space for all these dollies. Lily! Ellis! This is not how we use tape. <laughs> Ellis is bad, too? I can't believe it. <laughs> this is worse than we thought. Audrey, Jackson, Ellis, Flynn, Max, Tilly, cute name, Joey, Monty, Solly. Every kid in that class is a bad influence. Ah. Hi, Lily. We have a special play date for you. Hello, Miss Lily. My name is Adrian. <laughs> and I made your favorite, Parmesan sandwiches. That'll be all, Cliff. Hello. He's been helping in the kitchen. Aiden is a very good boy, so, you know, just do whatever he does. My lady, do you want to play out for that blocks? <gasps> Lily, what happened? Feeling dizzy, so cold. Miss Lily is a very bad girl. I'm having fun! <laughs> <laughs> We're so sorry. Uh, enjoy the apology, Parm. And they're rolling it back. It's picking up speed. Uh, uh, Lily, uh, there's plenty of cheese for all of us. Be a Gouda girl. You're acting like a monster. Uh, what has gotten into you, Lily? Uh, Lynn, I know why she's acting like this. It's the cheese. Too much cheese can really, you know, back up the plumbing. Oh, of course. And when that happens, you get, you know, cranky. <laughs> I know what we have to do. These triple brand fiber blast muffins ought to do the trick. Oh, I added chocolate chips. I'm not a monster. <laughs> Feeling better, sweetie? Much better. <gasps> Do you know what this means? He could turn us into the undead. Yes, our lifelong dream. Just think, one bite from him and we'll never have to wait for another season of Vampires of Melancholia, because we'll be living it. 
We can be just like Edwin forever. Da -da -da. Some for you, and for you, a lot for you, and some fresh own egg for Count Lucila. <laughs> garlic bread, Lucy? Yes. Oh yeah, forgot the no garlic thing. Family picture time. Oops, forgot, Lucy doesn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Boris wants eternal life and unbridled power. <laughs> Me too, Boris. But we can't just go up and ask him. Lucy's right. That never works on Vampires of Melancholia. It's way too desperate. We just have to play it cool and get him to notice us. Let's come back tomorrow. That'll give him time to settle in. What's with all the cars? <laughs> Whoa! We were right. They were all turned into vampires last night. <gasps> Gas, Mrs. Bernardo? <laughs> Mrs. Bernardo, you've been gifted eternal life and power, haven't you? One thing's for sure, he has terrible taste. He's building an army of the really basic undead. Wait, Morpheus, that's it. This guy must think we're already vamps, because we're so goth. I know what we need to do. We need to go normie. <sighs> okay, everyone. It's time to walk the normie walk and talk the normie talk. Lemonade. Get your lemonade. Huh? Uh, just two children full of blood selling lemonade for a marginal profit. Mm. Ah, my other eye! Drat, he didn't go for it. Here, friends, enjoy this carnivore's delight. Mm. I also have potato salad and coleslaw. Mmm, Boris loves a good BBQ, y'all. Let's crank this up a notch. Here he comes. Water vessel fight. Water selfie. <laughs> laugh, laugh. Us normal kids love water-based frolicking. Oh, come on. We pulled out all the stops. I even drank a pumpkin spice flavored beverage and he still doesn't want us. What in the underworld can we do to become vampires? Maybe we should just give up. Our dream is dead. No. If anyone deserves to be vampires, it's us. I know they don't do this on Vampires of Melancholia, but I say we just make him turn us. So wait, we can ditch these absurd, breathable garments? Oh, thank God. Listen to all those people. He must be inside turning more vampires. Well, we're next. Future vampires, descend. There he is. Fight us! Turn us into vampires! We beg thee. Cut! Can you get off my casting director, please? But he's a vampire. Ugh, okay. I know I'm pale and I work for Vampires of Melancholia, but can you spare me the wisecracks? Wait a minute. You guys are filming Vampires of Melancholia? Yes. And you kids are ruining my big break. Confused vampire number seven is the role of a lifetime. Mrs. Bernardo? Why didn't you just tell us what you were doing yesterday? Oh, a good actor never breaks character. Uh, I mean, uh... Okay, that's enough. It's time for you meddling brats to go. You're in the shot. Sigh. Wait. Huh? Huh? These kids are the gloomiest, creepiest, weirdest creatures I've ever seen. Why are you kind? Even their grandpa is creepy. Oh, <laughs> Boris is only nine, but still very flattered. They'd be great for the season premiere. They're obviously real goths and not just a bunch of randos from the mall. Rescued from your mortal state, my creatures of the night, rise and embrace your newfound vampire power. <laughs> oh, huh? Yes. My minions, have you shed your earthly attachments? Our human life is no more. Yup. And you dudes are gonna love the no bedtime thing. Uh. Thanks for helping us, like, not go extinct. It was our displeasure. Stella said he's one bad bunny. There are no bad bunnies, just misunderstood. <laughs> Jazzy, come back! Hey! 
Holmes. You need to keep that thing away from my prized petunias, Lyle. Uh, I'm trying. Whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Sorry about that, Mr. Grouse. Mm, sorry's not gonna bring back my petunias. Mm. Now, let's try this again, but with a leash. <laughs> now let's walk. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Let's try food motivation. Jazzy, this is butter lettuce. All you have to do is sit still, and you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> It's Lula! <laughs> Mana, what's wrong? Look! Oh no, you lost your bunny! Take my ride to go look for him. Thanks, Lulz. That's really sweet. But you better not fart in the driver's seat! <gasps> oh no, you guys! Look! Flip, did you see an unhinged rabbit come through here? Oh, uh, what do you think, champ? I'm not sitting up here so I can inspect my nacho cheese machine. Uh, give me a call later. I'll fix up your shop. <laughs> okay, which way did he go? The rabbit! Which way did he go? Okay, what way? <laughs> Hey, sweetie, how's the bunny training going? Terrible. I lost Jazzy. <laughs> can you drive me to Stella so I can tell her the bad news? Oh, of course. And hey, why don't we post some flyers on the way? And when we're done, I'll treat you to some ice cream. Did you get trapped in a car wash again? No, worse. We had to close Reininger's early. There was a rampaging bunny on the loose. It was like Easter, but awful. Jazzy! To the mall! Thanks for the ride, Mom. Hops, you come with me. Everybody else, stay put for your own safety. Who's still up for ice cream? Look, there's Jazzy! Gotcha! Hey, I demand you release that bunny. His name is Jazzy and he's in my care. What? Well, th th this is snazzy. And he escaped from my pet store earlier. But he looks exactly like Jazzy. It's like they're related or something. <gasps> Wait a minute. Does this rabbit have any siblings? Yeah, one. But I sold it a couple days ago to some girl. <gasps> Hops, I know what's going on. Snazzy is Jazzy's twin. Sir, I would like to buy Snazzy. Ugh. It all makes sense now. That's why both bunnies have been bad. They just need their twin, like Lola and me. I mean, sure, sometimes she can be awful, but I still love her and need her. And if Snazzy has twin powers like Lola and me, he should be able to find Jazzy by smell. <laughs> like right now, Lola's getting her nails done at Susie's salon. <laughs> hmm, I wonder what Lana's doing at the mall. Okay, your turn, Snazzy. Sniff out Jazzy. <laughs> Jazzy, you're back! Come on, let's get both of you guys to Stella. And congrats to our own Liam Honeycutt, whose cow Daisy gave birth to a baby boy. The proud mom had this to say, Moo! And now to Clyde McBride with Clyde's Culture Corner. Thanks, Lincoln! Girl Jordan is about to break the school record for the most books checked out. A whopping 47! And I'm being told none of them have pictures. Whoa! Whoa. Uh, I'm getting a breaking bulletin. A suspect is in the principal's office in connection with the stink bomb thrown at last night's dance. We now go to Stella Zell. That's right, Lincoln. The student is inside at this very moment. Viewers, I'm gonna try and get a statement from the suspect. Oh! Uh, uh, <gasps> Uh, 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 uh. <gasps> Rusty? Uh, uh. I'm innocent, I swear. Did Principal Ramirez say why she thinks it was you? She wouldn't tell me who, but there were witnesses who claimed to see me throw the stink bomb. And now I'm suspended for a whole week. Ah! 
I hate having to escort one of my baby birds off property. <laughs> Thanks for ruining our dance. Nice job, Cloud. Dance ruiner! This is a travesty of justice. We have to clear Rusty's name. Guys, you know what this means? Yeah, he's definitely not getting his deposit back. No, it means two suspects are cleared. We know who the culprit is. Confess, boy Jordan, you snake. You rented a white suit so you can throw the stink bomb at the dance and pin it all on Rusty. Um, what are you talking about? I didn't rent a suit for the dance. Andrew and I went in cat onesies. Aww. Rusty said I must have written it down wrong. Maybe it was another J name. James, Jason, Jackson? Or maybe it wasn't even a J name, which means it could be anybody. I hate to say it, but we failed. I'm really sorry we couldn't clear your name, Rusty. Thanks for trying, guys. I'll just stay in disguise until the end of middle school. Hopefully I'll get used to these heels. Three, two... Today's top news story. Turns out Liam's baby boy calf is actually a girl. When pressed about the error, Liam's Mima <gasps> said, My bad, y'all. It's hard to tell. You guys, I know who framed Rusty. Principal Ramirez, meet us at the lockers immediately. News team, follow me. This better be good. We had just cornered Bohofner's Bobcat. Can you keep it down? I'm giving a pop quiz. Hey, what's going on? I know who the actual stink bomb culprit is. Girl Jordan. <gasps> of course, there are two Jordans. Uh, that's absurd. I didn't do it. Oh no, <laughs> then open your locker. Uh, uh, fine. <laughs> <gasps> I am as shocked as you are! Who put this in my locker? That's what you should be investigating right now. <sighs> okay, it was me. I framed Rusty. <gasps> <gasps> but why, Girl Jordan? Why'd you do the Rust Man wrong? Because I was mad at you. Rusty and I were home ec partners. It was our final project, Sponge Cake. It was flawless until... Check out the Rust Man's newest moves. Uh, 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 uh. <gasps> no! It was the first F I ever got. I knew I had to get him back. Ugh. I rented the same style white suit Rusty wears to every school event. I found a red clown wig. I even studied his voice. And they were like, no way you could eat that entire hoagie, dog. <laughs> dog. That's when I knew I was ready. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I went way too far. Well, I'm sorry about the cake. You can go ahead and suspend me, Principal Ramirez. Do you have to suspend Girl Jordan? Can't we just call it even? Okay, I won't suspend her if you do me one favor and keep teaching. It's just so hard to find good subs these days. <gasps> you got it. That must be the front door key. But how do we get it? I could distract him with my sick dance moves. Yeah. Rusty, you're giving me an idea. I know how to get those keys. Hey, Mr. Bullhoffner, do you know how to dance? <sighs> I picked up some moves when I was stranded in the Sahara with those Irish step dancers. Why? There's a dance coming up, and poor Rusty here can't dance. Would you mind teaching him? I guess. Got nothing else to do. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Follow my lead. And one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, we're clear on the new plan. Hey there, Mr. B. Great fire. You know, I've got a new hobby these days. Cellars. Boy, do I love a good old-fashioned cellar. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, well, not a lot going on in Royal Woods. So, any chance I can see the cabin cellar? Knock yourself out. How about a personal tour? The key broke! Just need something to ram the door with. Hurry! Small offer is coming! Do my 
sisters on my Ace Savvy comics. And you're not allowed to hawk them to make a fast buck, Lola. <gasps> <laughs> What were you thinking, locking me in the cellar and running out into the woods? You could have been hurt! Well, it's just, we thought... We thought you were going to turn us into people jerky. <sighs> I should have known. This was all about those dumb lies people say about me. Come on, let's get you inside. As soon as the storm settles, I'll take you kids home. I think there's a spare tire for the van in the shed. I'll wait out there so you don't have to worry about Skull Hoffner. <sighs> Funny, I'm tough enough to wrestle a bear, but those cruel rumors hurt my feelings. I feel awful about what we did. Me too. Mr. B is actually really cool. I bet if everybody at school knew what he was really like, those rumors would go away. Yeah, Doc. Wish there was a way we could set the record straight. <gasps> Rusty, you're giving me an idea. Fine, I'll cha-cha with him. Not that. <laughs> See, Mr. B isn't a convict, or a mobster, or a cannibal. If you get to know him, you'll find out that he's a great guy who's brave and loyal. Oh, speaking of which, here's the bear wrestler himself, Mr. Cool Hoffner. <laughs> Uh, everybody get to class, or it's detention! Hey! Thank you. <laughs> cool, Hoffner. I took the liberty of upgrading everything. Let me walk you through it. Oops, maybe I should let you explain first. <laughs> Okay, you've got bifocal cameras, hearing aid, two-way radios, rocket dentures, and oh, this is my favorite, a remote walker launcher. All accessible through your watches, of course. Whoa! You'll also need disguises. Now, get back in there and crack this mystery! <laughs> okay, we're in. Now, what would David Steele do? Check the security cameras. How are we gonna get past her? Leave it to me. Hello, young person. Can I interest you in a hard candy? Candy from a stranger? Don't mind if I do. Wow, Lisa's chamomile sleepy time hard candies work instantly. Ooh, I hope her nose is okay. <gasps> Dang it, the cameras are disabled. The culprit was ahead of us. Ow. What was that? <gasps> it's Seymour! It's We'll grab you some ice. Clyde, look. Someone's messing with the drainage controls. That's why the water's gone. Hey, you! Get back here! He's getting away. Stop! <gasps> you are busted, sir. We know you've been sabotaging Sunset Kid. <gasps> Nana Gale? Who the heck are you two? It's us, Lincoln and Clyde. Nana Gale, why'd you turn to a life of crime? Oh, Clyde, I'm not the bad guy. I went undercover to find him. I don't want to move out of Sunset Canyon. I just unpacked. Huh, what a twist. So, do you want to join forces? We can share our intel and you can share yours. I'm in. So what you got? Nothing. You? Also nothing. Oh, well, that's disappointing. But I was about to check clues by the pool's control panel. Oh, yeah. Maybe there's something there. I can't see anything. Hmm. Maybe Lisa's watch has a light. Uh oh, I think we accidentally activated the rocket walker. That one is our bad. Weird, why do I sound like an elf? <laughs> Me too. It's like we're breathing helium. Whoa, we are breathing helium. That machine looks like it's sucking it out from the walls. What's with all the balloons? <gasps> I know who the culprit is. Come on out. Vic. So you figured it out. The guy with the family balloon business wanted access to the ginormous helium deposit under Sunset Canyon. You almost got away with it, too. You even put on roller skates to throw us off. Well, aren't you just a regular David Steele? Too bad I have a getaway plan. You'll never stop me. <laughs> Come on, Clyde. Ah! 
watching Sunset Canyon, trying to get everyone to move. <gasps> Come on, everyone! Over there, he's trying to escape. <laughs> See you, losers. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I got you, Lincoln. Be careful, Clyde. Now get off. We need to pop his balloons. <gasps> Lincoln, the rocket ditcher's in the watch. <gasps> You can say that wraps up this case. Yep, just one thing left. What to do with Vic? As head of the board, I say he fixes everything. Come on, let's hit the hardware store. You're buying. I'm Catherine Mulligan here with Lisa Loud, the pint-sized genius who discovered a dinosaur bone in her front yard. Tell us, Lisa, what are your thoughts on this new species that I've already dubbed Loudosaurus? Uh, the thing is, is uh... Dr. Loud doesn't have any further comments at this time. How would you like to have your very own show? Oh, <gasps> My own show? Your story is very compelling. A five-year-old who found a dinosaur bone in her yard? <sighs> Exciting stuff. Okay, um, I should clear something up. The show would be broadcast everywhere. Yeah, I understand, but I really must... You'd have the opportunity to get children from all over the world interested in science. Oh, uh -huh. interested in science, you say? Uh, could you give me a moment to consult with my associate? God, it seems my erroneous discovery has led to some unforeseen benefits. But are you okay with being a liar, liar, panther on fire? Look, I see the irony of lying about science to get other kids into science, but in this case, the ends justify the means. <clears throat> Dr. Loud, have you made a decision? Let's do this, Doc. <laughs> Should be around here somewhere. It was fortuitous that the back door was unlocked. Oh, there. The Salorosaurian Theropod. Street name, T-Rex. How's the glue job look? I used Father's failed attempt at bechamel sauce as an adhesive. This T-Rex has over 200 bones. No one will notice if I replace one of them with my fake bone. Now, beam me up, Toddy. <laughs> Abort! Abort! Why? Ah! 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 Dang it! This will have to do. Going live in three, two, one. Welcome to Fat. Matter with your science hostess with the mostest, Lisa Loud. Today, we are at the Royal Woods Museum, and our special guest is Dr. Alvarez. Thanks for stopping by, Lisa. I believe you have something special to show our audience. Indeed, I do. This is the dinosaur bone I discovered in my backyard. And today, we are going to use the museum's carbon dating machine to determine what era it's from. Texture looks good. Shape looks good. Oh, color looks good. Lisa, this bone is museum quality. Go ahead and use my machine. Ah, and it's 100% from the Mesozoic era. Uh, oh, we should wrap this up. God, play the wrap-up music! <laughs> What's the rush, Dr. Loud? We still have 20 minutes left in the episode. Uh, uh. Dr. Alvarez, look out! Ah! <laughs> Dr. Alvarez! Dr. Alvarez! Todd, initiate search protocol! On it. Oh, what have I done, Todd? Dr. Alvarez got crushed by two tons of osseous matter because of my lies! <laughs> lies? <gasps> Dr. Alvarez, you're alive! Lisa, what lies? 
Well, the dinosaur bone I found wasn't real. It was an amalgam of loose bird bones bound together with a low-grade cheese saw, so I swapped it with one of the bones from the T-Rex. That's why it collapsed. <gasps> Lisa, how could you? I justified it by telling myself that kids around the world were getting into science because of me. But science is honest, and I certainly haven't been. I'm so sorry. Lisa, wait. It would be a shame to let all your knowledge go to waste. You're clearly good at inspiring kids and getting them interested in science. You mean I can have my show back? <laughs> Absolutely not. You have to earn my trust back first. Hmm. How would you like to start by giving tours in the museum? Really? I'd be honored.